Today's Q&A is, Joe, why can't I get a job as an interior designer? And this one is really close to my heart because I think this is probably the reason why I started mentoring. Um, because, uh, yeah, it is uh, hard to get a job in interior design or with an interior design firm, especially if you don't have experience. And I think that is the key um, really the key thing it's kind of like that whole chicken and the egg thing it's like well like I get experience without a job and I can't get a job without experience so you kind of keep going around in circles it becomes really really frustrating for those um, of you who you know have tried everything um, you know you've got degrees you've done everything you can you've worked for free um, and tried to do everything and um, you still can't get a job and um, I can understand why it's a really really frustrating question and um, why you'd want to know the answer. <laughs> so um, obviously there are a few different um, reasons, um, I'll give you the key reasons, but um, the uh, I, th I suppose the main thing that um, obviously you would need to consider is that you know there's m like every situation is different but predominantly these will be um, the places to look or refine your process for, for finding a job if that is what you want to do. So first of all, most people go down the course route. So they've gone, they've got an interior design diploma um, or they've got a design degree, they've done an architecture degree even, and they um, present their portfolio of work to a potential employer and it's crickets. So there's a lot of reasons at this point where um, uh, you could be going wrong. I do cover a lot of these in my YouTube video about um, portfolios for architects and interior designers. So um, if that is you, I would, I mean, it's a long video, so I appreciate it is, um, you know, you do have to <laughs> go through it, but um, I really go into big detail with visual examples as to what to include um, and um, uh, what you would use that um, graduate portfolio for and how you would um, try and get a job with it. So um, typically the biggest issues you do have are that the projects you worked on at university just aren't what the person is looking for and you know universities do get a lot of um you know slack for this because you know they're trying to give you a broad range of skills um you know to justify the price of their degree but also you know degrees are quite broad specific like you know they're not as specific as what an employer is typically looking for so you would have to refine what it is that you've done in and target that employer in a way like for example if that employer is looking for um, a junior assistant, um, they're going to be looking for somebody with drawing skills, typically um, somebody who can um, do a lot of things, not just, um, you know, um, not just put a scheme together. They're going to want you to be able to um, do 3D modeling, drawing, pick up the things that the, um, the employer is um, uh, will fill in that gap that the employer just doesn't have the time to do anymore. So um, if you're uh, straight out of a course and you're trying to find a job to gain experience, I would definitely go and watch my YouTube video about um, portfolio is for architects and interior designers because they are really going to a bit a lot of detail there. Um, and you can literally work on what it is exactly that is holding you back in that point and figure that out. But typically it's because the course or the, the portfolio that you've got from the course just isn't good enough because um, the competition is a lot greater than um, what uh, you've got. And so you'll have to pimp some areas of your portfolio um, to get that specific job, if that makes sense. So um, the next thing is typically skills, because um, you know every employer is looking for a specific set of skills to fulfill the job. And if you don't have those skills, even if you're eager to learn them, um, it just takes a lot of time for an employer to teach you these things. and you know, as much as, you know, I hate saying it, it's, you know, like teaching people takes a lot of time. And um, 
Uh, I mean, I used to do it when I worked for um, companies and I did my best to, um, if you know, if someone needed to be taught a program or if they had questions, I was always the one to help. But um, no one else was really willing to help because it took a lot of their time. Whereas, you know, I was single for a really long time. I, um, I loved what I was doing. So I always worked back. So, you know, if I spent an hour with someone teaching them a program or something, I was going to stay back till like 10 or 11 or 12 anyway. So it didn't matter to me. So, um, I just had no life, <laughs> but, um, you know, it, not everyone was willing to do that, if that makes sense, because it does take a lot of time to train somebody to give them the skills. So um, if you find that um, that could be the thing that is not getting you the job, it could be the skills that you've got. Maybe you were taught a program that this person doesn't use, or maybe that person that um, or maybe the company that you're applying for the job for um, needs a specific level of um, uh aptness or like um skill from you to be able to um uh, use the program that they they're hiring you for so um you know and it's still possible i mean i uh, got a job with a really amazing firm um and i didn't really know autocad very well at the time i had actually used it at another firm but um uh, and the gentleman who I'm still friends with today will laugh because I failed my AutoCAD exam, but I still got the job. So um, I was proficient, but I wasn't highly skilled at the time. By the time I finished at that firm, I was, you know, I was an expert in AutoCAD. But um, at, at the beginning stages, I had used it. And um, so obviously on my CV, I was proficient. <laughs> But um, when I sat the exam, um, because, you know, that could be the next stage of the interview is sitting in an exam to tell, you know, to test your skills, uh, which uh, happened to me. And um, I actually failed the exam. But um, I think the failures that I made weren't um, the key. Like it, it showed that I could still use the program. It was just that um, the way I had been taught to use it wasn't probably the best way. Um, so these were fixable things. Um, so it's still not the end of the world. <laughs> Um, what else could it be? It could be that you're just not presenting the information in the right way. So it could be too artistic sometimes. Um, you know, architects get this all the time and interior designers are just as bad. <laughs> you know, you've just come from uni or from school or from, you've done a course and you're presenting things so artistically just to show your creativity. Most people don't want to see it. They just want to see what they're looking for. They've got five minutes to go through your portfolio. They're just like, they don't want to see <laughs> You know, unless it's relevant to the job, they don't care. <laughs> they just like want to see whether you fit the role and then they want to meet you in person most of the time. So um, do what you can to provide the information as clearly as possible because you could be letting yourself down because you're just going over the top, right? Um, you know, that if you're applying for a very specific arty firm, okay, well, that could be part of the job role. Like, you know, you've got to be different. You've got to stand out, you know. But not every interior design firm is like that. In fact, most of them are just really practical people who just need somebody who can draft or something, right? Or can, you know, um, who's a, a good designer who has a lot of skills that they can use to transfer across and pick up when someone else is away or um uh, you know just be an all-rounder which is um you know I was that kind of person I had so many skills that um I was never I never had problems finding work really so what else could it be um you could you might not just be selling yourself right because don't forget you are selling yourself as um you know uh, w when you're applying for a job so there are certain things that you shouldn't say um, potentially in your uh, CV or portfolio or in that first email when somebody calls you and says, oh, I just wanted to have a chat, you received your uh, CV. Um, you could just be saying the wrong thing. So getting maybe some feedback from a few um, people in the industry rather than... Um, uh, your friends, especially not your colleagues from um, design school. They're probably the worst people to ask unless they've gotten a job and then you can kind of see what they did. So I would see the successful portfolios from people who did get jobs or su successful CVs. I remember doing that actually. Um, I had um, 
been employed for such a long time that when I was um, looking for a job after a, a while, I actually went to one of my friends who had recently gotten a really great position and said, do you mind if I have a look at your CV? And he shared it with me. So um, I was really grateful that he did that um, because I could see that my CV was a bit outdated by that point and what I was including um, just wasn't very professional anymore um, and for the level that I was looking to step into. So um, I was still maybe I maybe still had a junior CV when I was looking for a senior role. So um, so you know, you may just not be presenting um, yourself in, in the right way for the right, for that position. So obviously every time you would, you're looking for, a, um, for the, uh, through the job uh, description, you'd be tweaking your um, CV and portfolio to that specific job role and to that specific um, company. So another big mistake is that you could be just create, sending out generic CVs and people really, I mean, it's insulting when you receive a CV like that, you're like one of a hundred <laughs> that who hasn't bothered to really look into the projects that I do or the kind of, um, I haven't even bothered to research. <laughs> and, you know, we just get so many emails and so many um, CVs that um, like, unless it something else really stands out, um, but even so, um, you know, a really good CV, but when someone hasn't taken the time to um, research the company, it's typically seen as um, just a bit rude, really. It's like if you really wanted the job and I've got a pick of all these people, why would I choose you if you haven't even bothered to do, do your research on me? So, um, you know, uh, I think that also like comes on to my next point is being eager about a job, you know. If you haven't bothered to, like, for example, research a company, um, it shows that you might not actually want that job. You just want any job, <laughs> which, I mean, I've also been there because um, I remember my first employer actually saying that to me. He was like, no, no, Joe, you just wanted any job. <laughs> but um, I really, um, which I did, um, but I, uh, I did like his specific company um, because of the projects that they were doing. So um, it was a bit of both. I just, um, I was so eager. Um, to get work um, and you know don't be afraid to be eager I think um, especially um, well maybe uh, you know as an Aussie we're just a bit different um, I find like in terms of my personality to um, you know my English friends here whereas they are a little bit more um, I don't think they show as much emotion, I think, potentially, um, excitement as my American friends or uh, us Aussies, potentially. So sometimes um, that seriousness can come across as maybe that you're not eager. And even if you really are, even if you re really do want the job, sometimes just um, showing that you are eager um, and following up sometimes um, just shows that um, you really want the job because no one wants to hire someone that doesn't you know that you're too cool like if you're cooler than me <laughs> in my own office I'm like yes I hire cool people but um attitude is a big thing and um if if you if you don't care whether you want the job then I'm not going to hire you if that makes sense so um there's and I uh, and I suppose again that comes down to the type of firm um you know, I remember uh, one of my best mates, um, you know, one of the things about uh, the firms he worked for were that they were exceptionally trendy firms, but he still was, you know, very, very, um, he presented himself very well, but he also, um, he showed that he was eager to get the job, like he wanted to work there. It's not like, I'm just too cool. Um, I don't care. And I'm so nonchalant because, you know, it, yeah, I can take it or leave it. It's like, no, no, I really want to work here. <laughs> so um, don't be afraid to um, show that you're eager. Um, I think only one more thing to really cover is, you know, going back to the beginning is experience. People really want to see some kind of experience. And that is really the hardest part. And if you can't get experience, um, 
you know, get creative. Um, there are, um, well, actually I've even written, I think two more blog posts on how to, um, it's specifically on how to get clients without a portfolio, but the kind of system would be the same because um, you're, you're basically trying to um, uh, build on your, build information into your portfolio and try and gain an experience without, um, uh, without physically getting a job. So um, go and either have a look at that blog post or again, um, uh, just have a look at some of the blog posts on our um, website or check out the YouTube video that has the um, uh, the section about portfolios for interior designers and architects. But, you know, you can fill in those bits and pieces and sometimes it's just as easy as doing a fake project just to fill in the gap that you're missing, which could be, you know, you, even though you're capable of doing um, a detailed drawing, for example, but you haven't got one in your portfolio because all you've got is design work. So, you know, of course that may be the one thing that is like, well, you haven't proven or you haven't shown me that you're capable of doing this. So go and, you know, do a drawing and put it into your portfolio so that I can see that you're capable of doing that one thing that I need you to do in um, to fulfill this role. So um, I think that also leads on to like another final thing, <laughs> which is, Adding stuff that just isn't relevant, um, you know, like commercial projects into a residential job. It's like, you know, even though it's a it's a trendy image or it's a really great image, if, you know, in most cases, if it's not relevant, you shouldn't be really including it unless you find a way of including it, like because you're splitting your um, your portfolio up in a, into a particular order or. Um, and you're saying, okay, this I haven't got residential experience in um, design, but I've got commercial experience in design. Um, uh, but you would make a note of that and say, um, I know this isn't relevant, but at least you can see that I'm capable of doing this um, here. And then it would lead on to the actual kind of uh, where you would have a substantial body of work that justifies that you can do the residential role that they're asking you to um, or that you're applying for the job for. So hopefully that gives you really some key areas to assess for yourself, whether, um, um, you know, why, where you could be going wrong. You know, of course, there's also the whole supply and demand, you know, maybe just, you know, people just aren't looking right now. Um, but if you know that there are jobs out there or if you're applying for jobs and there are people advertising and just not getting them, these are the things that I would really look at and um, try to fix in my own CV or portfolio and try to see um, um, how that helps. And let me know, um, you know, if um, if you do go and um, assess your portfolio and you've um, gone through one of my videos, just let me know below and see if it helped you. Um, or if you um, have any other questions or advice for um, any anyone else who's in the same position as you, because as you know, if you are watching this, it's really, really frustrating and confusing and heartbreaking and all of those horrible things, especially when you are so eager just to and passionate to do this job and everyone just keeps closing the door. So, um, yeah, hopefully this gives you that kind of kick that you needed and um, a little bit of direction to help you kind of isolate the problem so that you can solve it as quickly as possible.